Welcome back to the substitutes. And today we're going to be talking about a super sub's lack of faith in subs. We're looking at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and um, his lack of substitutions at Manchester United throughout last season and maybe looking at the one before. Majid, welcome. And this is on the back of the UEL final. He didn't make a substitution until the 100th minute, bringing on Fred uh, for McTominay, I believe it was. Talk to me about that. Do you think it was justified? Um, no, I personally do not, to be very blunt about it. I think um, it's not just Fred and McTominay. There's Danny Van de Beek. There's a bunch of guys, Ahmad Diallo. There's a bunch of bodies that he could have used, which I, he just, I don't know if he didn't want to, if he refuses to, if it's a trust issue, if it's a game plan tactical issue. I'm not sure. And I think... That's sort of where a lot of anxiety is. United fans are not sure why he's not using them. Tactically or faith-wise or whatever. Okay, so you're thinking that there's quite a lot of squad depth, but I want to kind of turn it on its head a little bit. Fine, he Diallo is quite young. Uh, Donny van de Beek hasn't got a lot of minutes. Fred and McTominay don't really turn games on its head, and he has a tried and trusted system. He has used subs before, like in Leicester, the FA Cup. It failed. Uh, against Chelsea last year, it failed. So maybe he just doesn't trust the squad. If that's the case, then why did you pick these players? Why, like, why are you even bothering suiting them up then? Just sort of tell everyone, go home, this is my active 11. And I want to point out, there's a number of reasons why like, lack of rotation is not just one problem it leads to several trickle down issues for example your active 11 is put under a lot of pressure and strain obviously that's where you begin with injury stamina load management fatigue starts to kick in you become more prone to injury and mental fatigue too like to be honest there is also that um i think then there's also a confidence and a match prep issue for the actual substitutes so when do if they do come on, if they do come on, uh, they're not necessarily mentally prepared or ready or physically, you know, game time ready. That speed, you can't simulate that in practice. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other issue, and this goes to Ole almost directly, is if you don't use your subs, there's no plan B. At United specifically, it's sort of this is the game plan and that's it. Uh, they're not mentally prepared or tactically prepared uh, when they're up 1-0 or when they're dead. Like, they've come back plenty of times this season. I won't knock them on that. But in terms of game plan, if it doesn't go right, it becomes a disaster often. So I do think the lack of rotation in general is a big... It's like 50% of other... There are other issues, but this one is 50% of the wider issue. It makes up a big chunk. So you mentioned something there, um, injuries and stamina. Um, there was a point in the season when United were, they were on and off at the start of the season and then they went on a run after losing to Arsenal. Uh, forget the Champions League, we're focusing on the league right now. And then Pogba got injured. And um, he like the side never looked the same after that. Rashford was also playing with an injury all season. We've also heard a lot of stories about um, Lindelof playing with injuries all season. And by the end of the season, you saw that these players... I mean, even Luke Shaw didn't play up to the standard that he did early on in the season in the last few games. You saw that they were quite tired. Um, so I, I, I kind of do agree with you on that point. And you now mentioned another thing. Uh, no confidence in match prepness for substitutions. And you know who I'm going to bring up here. Um, the man who was signed for 40 million. The man who was thrown on in the last 5 to 10 minutes. Do you think that was justified? Do you think 5 to 10 minutes is enough time to make an impact on any games? Um, and depending on your response, I want to lead it back to another point. So take it away. 
it talk is about Donny. if you're it is if you're an established player like Ole was at a certain point at some point and afterwards if you're you know 25 26 uh, 34 35 even Henrik Larsson style if you are a super sub who's mm. mentally and physically ready for that and you know you're you're experienced enough to know what to expect in those five to ten minutes that you're going to get one to two touches if you're lucky and you really have to make them count when you're younger um especially when you're very very young and at a new club a new environment all of that i think it's it's not fair to point out and say he didn't perform that's that's kind of like no like let's context matters uh, yeah, I agree with that. I don't think Donny van de Beek did anything wrong last season. Um, he didn't get enough runs in in the squad. Um, he didn't even play in the Europa League final, which is strange. Um, and I think he finally got like two or three games at the end of the season, it's, which isn't enough time, really. But do you think he he and other players didn't get enough uh, game time because the results weren't comfortable even though the victories may have looked comfortable the results weren't actually comf- comfortable at a closer look do you think that could have been a factor as to why Ole never substituted yes so um, let's talk about some of the other factors one of the things I think that should be mentioned off the bat and this is every team I had to deal with was a packed football schedule it really really yeah. was a wild roller coaster ride up and down sometimes zero games sometimes four games and you're just like they don't know and they're also given 24 48 hour notice there was it was a very packed schedule uh but that everyone dealt with um the defense throughout the season gave away schoolboy goals it was really shocking some of the defensive errors that were made and that's sort of i think a mental switch off they seem to mentally go off um after a decent purple patch of like 180 minutes they'll have like a half an hour brain fart and it just leads to some awful awful defending and some video lowlights um the other thing is i don't think the players performed at crucial moments throughout the season they created unnecessary or very damaging inflection points throughout the season it's not just the europa final um the champions league group they should have coasted <sighs> and they did all the hard work at the beginning uh, and they messed it up on the second half of things. Um, the FA, they reached the quarters. The EPL, they were first for a while in the table. They could have elongated that at least, stretched it out for a couple more weeks. Um, so yes, Ole is to blame, sure, for a lot of things. But at some points, the players, the Europol final was the cherry on top, the last reminder of it, that they just didn't perform. At some, at crucial, crucial points, they just did not perform. And that's not on Ole. That's on them. At some point, you have to look at that. So you're kind of going from... You're kind of giving Ole a little bit of justification for his actions because... Very fair. Because of which is which is weird because we've just spent all this time talking about his lack of substitutions. I I know um, I know I know what you're trying to say. Like you know the players do have to perform at the high level when you're three nil up against Everton or is it no, two nil up against Everton and then you draw three all. That's very telling. Um, there are so many schoolboy errors that gave away like. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember much. I remember early... Okay, Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham was one. Uh, God, that was horrible. Crystal Palace was pretty bad. Even Arsenal against Brighton. Arsenal was brutal. It wasn't, it wasn't bad scoreline. It just hurt, you know, over here. <laughs> Anytime you lose to Arsenal, it hurts. Um, because this Arsenal, everyone bro. beats them. This Arsenal, bro. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Continue. Yeah, all right. This <laughs> Arsenal. You lose to this Arsenal, it hurts. I know there was a packed schedule. Um... Players had very little turnaround time, so maybe that was... I mean, you look at Manchester City, they rotated so much. Uh, Liverpool were forced to rotate. Other teams rotated because they had to. Um, so I don't think a pack schedule was something that uh, that uh, could be blamed, actually. I think that was actually something he should have taken advantage of and rotated more. 
Defensive error is fine. Um, when you have someone like Eric Bailly as standby, he can either be brilliant or horrible. You never really know what to expect. And you're right, the side was kind of very inconsistent. Just looking at the results, I mean, I'll give you an example. Newcastle, we won 4-1. But if you look closely, Fernandez, 86 minutes, scored the second goal, then wan in the 90th minute, and Rashford in the 96th. And that's actually, when you take a look closer at all the results, that's actually the story of the season. Anytime you win uh, 3-1 or 2-0, for example, it's usually late on. It's never really comfortable. So maybe that's why he never trusted subs, but he still should have made it. Let's be honest, he still should have given them runs throughout the season because they could have had an impact. Well, I will say this this lack of rotation and these players, if if they don't mature fast, meaning the start of next season, another year, shows Ole might not make it. Like as a coach, there's plenty of really good coaches out there and people are, there's always pressure on him. I think this would be one of those contextual, like when I say context matters, this would be one of those key moments where maybe had he used this season where we didn't end up winning anything, if he had used this season to develop those players and just give them time, maybe we win, maybe we lose, give them some time, give them some experience, give them some confidence. Um, and maybe that pours into next year. If he continues to remain as rigid in his starting lineups um, into the future, it's, it'll be interesting to see. It's very Games of Thrones ending, I feel. In the early uh, season. <laughs> okay, so then I'm just going to round it off with this question then. Do you think the season was a success? Ole doesn't. Uh, number one, and he's the one in charge. He's the one. He's the one at the wheel, as they say. Um, I would categorize it. I would say it was a successful season, but the season was not a success. If that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. But I, I'm joking. <laughs> I uh, look. I there probably a success in terms of progress. Um, but it's a little bit of a sour taste because. I think a lot of United fans thought we this was a walk in the park and we should have known better really like not not in terms of uh like we were going to lose in terms of we should have taken this a bit more seriously I think the players should have taken it a bit more seriously as well um they just didn't perform when it mattered the most let us know what you guys think in the comments below uh please subscribe if you like the channel and if you like the video uh, give it a like and we'll see you guys next time thank you all for joining